the shorter, the better. In fifth place, with a takeoff distance of maybe 1,800 meters, it's the B2 Spirit. In fourth place, it's the Airbus Beluga. It needs 938 meters of runway to get airborne. In third, the Spruce Goose. On its one and only flight, it took a run-up of 650 meters before lifting from the water. Which is an altitude of 20 to 30 meters and has a traveling distance of about two kilometers. And it did all this just for once. Second place goes to the C-17 Globemaster. It holds a world record for lifting off in hostile territory with a 20-ton cargo in just 426 meters. This is a really special plane because it's actually built for combat situations. It doesn't actually need a paved runway to take off or land. It can actually land on a dirt road. But at number one, with a takeoff distance of zero, and ambitions to become the cargo transporter of the future, it's the Aeroscraft. Vertical takeoff, vertical landing, and a seriously heavy load. If you can crack all that with maneuverability and fuel efficiency, you've got a winning formula. Tustin, California. Behind the closed doors of a wartime hangar, a team of pioneering engineers are on a mission to complete a flying machine like no other. A rigid, heavy cargo carrying airship with vertical takeoff and landing capabilities. How much longer do you think you got before you'll be ready to go? Tim Kenny is a specialist in lighter than aircraft. He is the Aeros Craft's lead mechanical engineer. Today, Tim and his team are under mounting pressure. They're fast approaching their deadline for a highly anticipated test flight, but a crucial bit of kit keeps failing. The culprit is a servo, a tiny component that rotates the airship's 200 kilogram engines to vertical, enabling it to take off. Without it, the aeroscraft cannot fly, and the test flight will have to be postponed. Today's test is, is our milestone. Today is the day, the D-Day, for the advancements that we want to put into this demonstration vehicle to prove that the 66-ton Aeros craft will be able to be flight-worthy. The team's 81-meter-long scaled-down craft, nicknamed Dragon Dream, has already successfully hovered inside the hangar. But next, they want to fly it outdoors as they aim to change the face of aviation forever. There's no aircraft that can go to remote destinations where there's no landing surface, there's no runway. This aircraft will be able to fly in when it's full payload, offload the cargo without ever even touching the ground. The secret to the Aeros craft is submarine-style buoyancy management. Like all modern airships, it uses lighter-than-air helium to float. But a ballast control system enables the craft to descend by simply compressing the helium into tanks and replacing it with heavier air from the atmosphere. Once loaded with cargo, the helium can be decompressed, expelling the air from its shell and returning the craft to full buoyancy. In the hangar, it's crunch time for the engineers. They must now put their highly modified servo to the test. If it fails to rotate the engine, the craft will be unable to take off vertically and it will be back to the drawing board the engineers. All right, so the main purpose is trying to calibrate the, the new servo and make sure that it performs the way so it's supposed to. Munir Jojo Verge is the Eros class test pilot. If today's test fails, his dream of taking the Eros craft skywards from its state-of-the-art cockpit will have to be shelved. This is a pretty unconventional and uh, unorthodox cockpit. First of all, you have a 360 degrees around us that allows us to look at any direction. The other major feature is the uh, total control of the whole systems through the touch screens that allows the, the pilot to interact with the, with the aircraft in a very, very intuitive way. Time to put the new component to the test. We're clear to start the left engine. Um, it's all clear on the outside. In the cockpit, Munir fires up one of the Aeros craft's 300 horsepower engines. Uh, 
25 deflection. He gently eases back on the joystick. And 10 meters above, the engine rotates skywards. On the hangar floor, the team watch on as Munir puts the new servo through its paces. It's a textbook demonstration. And there's relief all round as the servo proves more than capable of handling the engine's weight. Good job, guys. Looks nice. Engine test, success. And the test flight remains on schedule. Every single accomplishment in this aircraft, it puts us closer to the final date of flight test. So uh, it is definitely very, very exciting. Uh, but I mean, it, I mean, it rotated so nice. Uh, it's so smooth. Yeah. Well, the, the team's done a great job. We successfully finished that engine test today with the new servo. This is going to allow us to take this baby outside and fly it. It's been a good day for the Aeroscraft team in Tustin. Yeah, you can see it. Time to go home. Thank you. Thank you. They're now one step closer to realizing their dream of a lighter-than-air transporter unlike anything else in the skies. Five extreme aircraft. Five incredibly diverse feats of engineering. Each one a record-breaker in its own right. But which one is the ultimate giant aircraft?